I'm going to show you how to run integration tests in your continuous integration pipelines using Docker containers. Running your test like this works in both GitHub Actions and Azure DevOps, and we're going to use XUnit and test containers to execute our test cases. We're going to start from an empty XUnit test project and implement our support for integration testing. The libraries that are going to allow me to do this are XUnit as the test runner. Then I'm going to use Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC testing to be able to run my web API inside of an in-memory instance. And this will allow me to execute my application requests almost as if the application was actually running. I'm going to use Fluent Assertions for my test assertions. And then the most important NuGet package that's going to allow me to run this inside of my continuous integration pipelines is test containers. This is a library that allows you to create disposable Docker containers that you can use for your integration testing. I installed the PostgreSQL and the Redis libraries because these are the external services that I'm using in my application. So let's go ahead and add some boilerplate that will make writing our integration tests easier. I'm going to add an abstractions folder. Inside of this folder, I'm going to add the integration test web app factory. The web application factory is a class from the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC testing namespace and is going to allow me to bootstrap an in-memory instance of my web API. Now I'm also using test containers to set up a PostgreSQL and a Redis container and I'm using the XUnit iAsync lifetime interface in order to start and stop these containers when I'm executing my tests. And I'm also overriding the configure web host method to configure the test services to be able to connect to the database and the Redis container that are now running inside of a Docker container. What I'm doing here is replacing the EF core configuration to connect to our instances running inside of our Redis container. We're using test containers to spin up this instance and I'm doing the same for my Redis configuration. So this is the boilerplate that's going to allow me to run an in-memory instance of my web API. I'm also going to add a base integration test class, which is going to implement the iClass fixture interface from X unit. This allows me to share data between my test cases. And because I'm using the class fixture with the integration test web app factory, this is going to be the service that's going to be instantiated for my individual test classes. I'm going to use the web app factory to create a service scope for each test class. And then I can use this to resolve services using dependency injection. The services that I'm going to use are going to be the iSender, from Mediator, which is going to allow me to send my commands and queries and get back a response. Then I'm resolving a database context instance. This is helpful to verify that the side effects of some commands are actually persisted in the database. And I also have a faker instance to make it easier to generate fake data for my test cases. Another implication of using a class fixture is that the container instances that I'm configuring inside of the web app factory are going to be shared between all of the test cases in a single test class. If you want to have separate container instances for each test, then you're going to have to create them manually. And alternatively, if you want just one container instance between all of your test cases, even if they live in different test classes, then you can use an I collection fixture from X unit. And this will allow you to define a collection of test cases that are going to share the integration test web app factory instance and by extension, the test container instances. I'm not going to use this approach, but I wanted to highlight this option so that you are aware of it for your project. Now let's go ahead and add some test cases so that we have something to execute in our continuous integration pipelines. I'm going to create a class that's going to test my create user command. Test classes have to be public and I'm going to implement my base integration test class. I'm going to add the messy members, which are the constructors, and I'm ready to add my first test case. This is going to be an asynchronous test and I'm going to be testing my handle method. So I'm going to name the test as handle should, and then I'm going to say that it should create a user when the command is valid. So we're going to test the happy path in our use case. Now let me show you what the command looks like. We're going to use the create user command. It contains an email, a name and a profile and it is handled by the create user command handler. The handler is going to do a few checks, see if this email is available in the database and eventually it's going to insert the user to the database and then persist this using the unit of work which is actually just our EF core database 
context. So let's see how we will write this test. I'm going to add the arrange, act and assert steps. Then I'm going to create my command and test. This is going to be a create user command. I'm going to use the faker instance to provide an email and some random name or rather I'm going to use a username for the user's name and let's pass in true for the has public profile. Then I'm going to grab a result and this is going to come from me sending my command instance. I'm going to use the I sender that's available on the base integration test and let's just send this command and what we get back a result of a GUID. Now I'm just going to verify that the is success flag of my result should be true. And this is enough to test the happy path of my test case. Now I'm going to execute this test and show you that this is actually working. You can see that my test is passing, but are you actually convinced that this is persisting a user in the database? Well, let's go ahead and verify that. I'm going to copy this test case and we're going to alter it slightly to verify the state in the database using our database context. I'm going to update the test name. I'm going to say handle should add user to database when the command is valid. And then the setup is the same. I'm going to create a command instance, send this using mediator, but then my assert step is going to be different. I'm going to add a variable to hold my user instance, and I'm going to say await db context, and this is the property that's available on my base integration test class. And I'm going to say users and then find async, and let's use the primary key that we get back from the result object to find this user. And then I'm going to say user should not be null. Now I'm going to run my two test cases, one executing the happy path and just verifying the result object. And the other one is going to check the state in the database after I have executed my test. So you can see that both of our tests are passing and this is how you can verify your integration tests using the EF core database context. I'm going to add one more test class. This one is going to be inside of the workouts folder and is going to be called the create workout tests. Now let me show you the two test cases I have inside. The first one is testing that the create workout command should actually create a workout when the user exists. So this is again the happy path of the create workout command. Let me quickly show you the create workout command handler. You can see that it's fetching the user from the database. So it's important that the user is already created before we can execute this command. Then it's just going to instantiate a workout instance and then persist this in the database, which is why in the arrange step, I'm creating a create user command and then executing this to get back a user ID. Then I can use this user ID for my create workout command instance. And when I send this, I expect the result to be a success result. The second test case is similar to what we did when we were creating a user. I'm first creating a user so that I have a test user to create a workout. And then I'm verifying that this workout is actually stored in the database when my command is executed. Let's go ahead and run all of the test cases that we have for our integration tests. And let's see if all of them are passing. You can see all of our tests completed and they are all green. And now let me show you how you can actually execute this inside of a continuous integration pipeline. And I'm going to use GitHub Actions for this example. This is the workflow file that I'm using to configure my GitHub action. Now let me walk you through what I have here. The action itself is going to execute whenever I have a push to the main branch. And I'm also adding a workflow dispatch trigger so that I can manually execute my action if I need to. I'm storing the .NET version inside of an environment variable. And then I'm defining my actual jobs. I only have one job called build and it's running on an Ubuntu machine because this is cheaper than running on Windows. And this machine already comes with Docker installed, which is why I can just set up the .NET SDK on my machine. And then I'm going to run .NET restore. After the restore has completed, I'm going to run .NET build. And I'm using the no restore flag to make this operation a bit faster. And in the end, I'm running the most important part, which is executing our tests using the .NET test command and I'm also using no restore and the no build flag because we have already restored and built our project. So now I can only execute my tests and see if all of my test cases are passing. Now let's head over to GitHub where I'm actually going to show you how my GitHub action is executing. 
Here is my GitHub action and you can see that I'm using the build YAML file that I just showed you. Now I can step into the actual job which is the build job and we can observe the steps that we have inside. Currently the restore step is running which is going to go through the projects that we have in the solution and restore them one by one. You can see that this step took under 20 seconds and currently the build step is executing and after this completes we're going to run our tests. So let's wait up for the build to finish. It shouldn't take much longer and then you're going to see that our tests are going to start to execute and you can see our test step is running inside of our GitHub action and what you're seeing here are the logs from our test containers project. Right now it's spinning up the container instances that we're going to need to run our integration tests and the services that I'm using are Postgres and Redis. You can see a lot more logs that I'm going to walk you through now and some of these are coming from my ASP.NET Core application. So let's go back to the top of the test step and I'm going to walk you through what's actually happening here. So you can see our .NET test command executing here and here are the results for our application unit tests. I have 11 tests inside and all 11 of them have passed. For the domain unit test project, all nine unit tests have passed and we have the same case for our architecture tests. And then we're going to execute the integration tests which are actually using test containers and the functional tests that I also have as part of this solution that are also using the test containers library. Now you can see a lot of logs. For example, you can see that we are pulling the latest Postgres image here. If we go down, we're going to find the same log for our Redis image. Here it is. And finally, when our container instances are ready, it's going to start the in-memory instance of our web API. The SQL statements you're seeing here are actually my EF core database migrations that are being executed on my Postgres instance running inside of a container. To show you how this works, if I'm running inside of a development environment, I'm going to execute the apply migrations extension method. And this is just going to create a custom service scope, resolve the EF core database context, and then use it to run my migrations. So this is going to generate the SQL logs that you're seeing here. It's going to create our tables, relationships, foreign keys, primary keys, indexes, and so on. And finally, it's going to start processing our requests. For example, you can see this log here, which is my functional test executing a post request to the API version one users endpoint. And this is going to create a user. So let's go to the bottom where we get our test results and you can see that all of our tests from the integration test library are passing and all of the tests from the functional test library are also passing. And this is how you can run your integration tests inside of our continuous integration pipeline. The only prerequisite is that this supports using Docker containers. In the case of GitHub Actions, this works out of the box. This also works with Azure DevOps, so you shouldn't have a problem running your integration tests if you are using test containers. One alternative I want to mention if you don't want to use test containers is that you can just spin up your containers using Docker Compose. So let's, for example, say I add another step, which I'm going to call compose. And here I can say something like Docker compose, specify the specific Docker compose YAML file that I want to use for my tests and then run the app command, which is going to spin up my Docker containers. When you are writing your tests, you have to make sure that you're connecting to the services that you configured in the Docker compose test YAML file. So we covered integration testing, but if you want to learn how to write high quality unit tests, then you should watch this video next. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.